my God. I just, I just, I just, 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 just want this to get over with, please. I just want this over with. I just want it done. I just want to move on. I want to go to other things and not have this sit in our stomachs for days and days and days with this Hassan Reddick stuff, okay? And a new report has come out that a trade could be incoming and what teams are involved with a familiar face attached to it and what it could look like. Hassan Reddick looks like, it looks like the trade is going to happen. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. (sighs) Well, we are here yet again because we still don't know what's going to happen with Hassan Reddick. Okay. Now, we know what's been going on since pretty much after the playoff game where Reddick has been saying nonstop he wants to stay in Philadelphia, that he saw he, he had got permission from the team to go seek out a trade, but to seek out what his worth is coming off. You know, this is three different teams, double-digit sacks. A lot of players don't do that, okay? Um, you know, and I'm sorry, but through the two weeks of free agency, a lot of players have... Uh, a lot of teams that have been traded for specific players have, have been gained the right picks and trades. Uh, a lot of, I don't know what you're going to get for Hassan Reddick, but here is the report that I have to read out from Jay Fowler. Okay. Because appearing on Sports Center on Saturday morning, ESPN's Jay Fowler reported the expectation around the NFL is Reddick will eventually be traded with the Arizona Cardinals and the Atlanta Falcons side as potential landing spots. Quote unquote, the expectation league wide is that he has moved at some point. The Eagles went and spent on Bryce Huff. They re-signed Josh Sweat. Oh, not re-signed. They restructured him. Uh, they, he, had, he still was on contract for the year. Uh, so they have their two pass rushers. Reddick appears to be the odd man out. He does, he does want a new deal. But this is a premier guy that should have value. He wants a new contract plus the draft capital that's going to take to get him. Arizona could be a team to watch because Jonathan Gannon was with him two years ago in Philly. They had good production together. Arizona needs pass rushers. Atlanta is an extent, so there should be teams in the mix. Yes, both of those teams need need edge rushers. We'll get into those two teams later on in this video. If you're going for a Super Bowl, okay, this makes no sense to do. He's turning 30 years old in September. I've said this over and over. Look at the other trades that have been going on around the league. Okay, Brian Burns, a younger player, 26 26 years old, okay? Less statistics, not even close to what Hassan Reddick has, okay? Hassan Reddick is a separate entity when it comes to players because nobody, a player like this normally doesn't get traded, okay? If this was Miles Garrett and, you know, Hassan Reddick, then I can understand because both guys have had double-digit sack seasons uh, consistently. But when it comes to Hassan Reddick, I think he's in a totally different realm. And that's why a trade has not went down yet. I think Hassan Reddick is not getting the money that he wants. And number two, I don't think Howie Roseman is getting the compensation that he wants. Who, Whether you trade up in the draft and get and replace Reddick, or you trade for another guy that's a cheaper option, it's still going to be an undervalued... It's going to be a, 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 not an upgrade. It's 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 nobody could replace the productivity of what Reddick is going to do. Okay, that's just the main thing. Late in Le- in Reddick's career, he can't afford to sit out and hold out a whole entire year at his age. Time is of the essence when it comes to a latter part of your career where you can't sit, you can't hold out, even if like nothing happens and he holds out the rest of the season. You know. It seems like Reddick will kind of get his leverage back if he holds out through training camp and all that happens. I don't think any of that happens at all because I don't think Reddick would even do that at this point. I think he would want to work something out. All I've been hearing from Hassan Reddick, from his trainer, there was some news that he wants to stay in Philadelphia. If the number is $25 plus million, it's not going to happen. Okay? You know, you end up getting a pass rusher to big money at $17 million with Bryce Huff. Now, Bryce Huff's contract, a big contract, but what what compared to Reddick's contract, it's not going to be that much, okay? I thought it was actually really funny 
that not only did that news come out on the same day, but other news came out, other news came out immediately, okay, on Layatu Latu, on the same day this Reddit report came out, that officially Layatu Latu is coming in for a pre-draft visit for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, it's coming off a 13-sack season. Yes, 2020, um, you know, he almost had the, you know, almost had, you know, he was medically retired pretty much because of a neck injury. He came back and he just balled out after that. Okay, so it's just funny how that report came out. And yes, like if they got rid of Reddick, I would really love for them to move up in the draft and get an edge rusher. And you know, you're not going to replace the productivity. That's why. That's why I'm saying Reddick is so important because you know, even with even with Bryce Huff, with Bryce Huff, you're not going to have a double digit sack season this year. Maybe he will have it. I don't know. I could be wrong. I think after one year with the team, I think he he'll be better, you know, going to uh, you know his second year as a Philadelphia Eagle, and that seventeen million a year will be such a great contract. The only problem with Bri- the only problem with Bryce Huff as of right now is he only played forty three percent of the snaps, so he's top he's a top three player the last three years when it comes to pressure weight pressure rate win rate nine out of ten times ten out of ten times I'll probably say he always wins his one on ones, and having. Hassan Reddick on the opposite side of that. Man, Super Bowl caliber ready defense. Take your soul and eat it type defensive line that you would have. Okay? Without Reddick, <laughs> it, it 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 it's almost it's almost like your your defensive line is not it's not as great. And it and it sounds weird. It's it's just shitty and it's horrible because Nolan Smith just Nolan Smith should have produced last year. They didn't, you know, he had a couple injuries, you know, not nothing crazy, but they could have played him a lot last year. And Sean Desai had the excuse of we go and give snaps to so many players. And it was a bunch of BS. Okay. A bunch of BS with that. So it got me thinking, like, man, like if if Nolan Smith actually produced last year, you know, he got you know five to ten sacks, I wouldn't feel so bad to make a trade like this. But because he hasn't produced, and yes, Nolan Smith will play. He will start. There's already rumors that Vic Fangio was going to give him a heavy workload to start up camp because they want to see what else he could do and, you know, get his value up because he's got no value right now. He hasn't done nothing, okay? You go out and sign Bryce Huff to big money, and when I mean aggressively went out there and got him, they got him instantly, okay? Several suitors. But... Since Josh Sweat got restructured, it made things more confusing. Like, man, does that mean that Reddick is gone? Because we thought the Josh Sweat trade was going to happen. After, on IG, when he was like, oh, you know, um, he was like, I'm going to miss you all on his IG. Quote, unquote, I'm going to miss you all. And nothing happens. We're like, okay. So he got restructured. He got more guaranteed money. But are the Eagles going to actually carry three edge rushers making over $10 million a year? And a lot of teams don't do that. That's a lot of money going into your edge rush. But you're trying to go for a Super Bowl. You get rid of Reddick. It just seems like they're not. They're not. I, I don't know how he. I know how he thinks this way. I know how he. You know knows. You know how he. How he thinks this team is prepared. This team is ready. I have loved the free agency moves, but this one bothers me because I think this this move, whether Reddick stays or goes, I think it designates where the Eagles are going in this draft. I'm sorry, but that's what I think. That's my opinion. Some people think. Oh, Reddick didn't do crap at the end of last year. Reddick didn't produce at the end of last year. I mean, who did? Who produced at the end of the year last year? Jordan Davis fell off. Jalen Carter fell off. Everybody fell off. Everybody hit a roadblock. There was a don't just single him out, single the rest of them out. But when it's the fourth quarter and you need someone to close out, you need that closer defensive lineman in the fourth quarter which Reddick did a few times this season where the defense, you know, pulled out some good pressures and got some sacks on the quarterback and made some big plays. Reddick was there, okay? That's why in the later part of his career, to get rid of him and replace him with moving up in the draft to get the best edge rusher, it's still, it's a downgrade. It's going to be a downgrade if they trade for somebody. It's going to be a downgrade. It's a downgrade because it's just, you can't replace a guy that's already had so many years under his belt and it's just playing at a high level right now. If Reddick this season, if I felt this past season that just we just that that was just ended, okay? If I felt like Reddick was slightly, you know, 
not producing, if I felt like he was kind of like going down, decreasing his productivity a little tiny bit, I would get rid of him in a heartbeat because, you know, then, you know, that's really starting to tell me that, you know, maybe at his age. But I don't see that with Hassan Reddick. I know he would work out with his scheme. I'm not even worried about that because I think you have the best defensive coordinator that can put guys in the right positions to win. And I think with the accountability and Vic Fangio is an actual like coach coach, not a fucking assistant, not some guy that you just got, just got, you know, hired off, you know, the Nathan's Franks, you know, hot dog stand on the corner and became a defensive coordinator. And Nick has no control over this because Vic Fangio has, is going to have all the control over his defense and nobody, nobody's going to butt in. Okay. What happened to the Eagles defense at the end of the season? The coaching change between Sean Desai getting demoted to Matt Patricia was the worst move they could have done. And multiple players have said that really screwed them up because to incorporate a new scheme in during the season is impossible. That's not enough time. That's why you have a, a whole offseason to do that. It was the worst move they could have done. So I I I'm not saying the Eagles aren't gonna win the Super Bowl without you know without him, but it, it's it's really hard for me to feel like they want to win. The longer this goes on, though, the more quiet it is every single day, the better I think it's going to get. Because even when Reddick, even sorry, even when Josh Sweat was restructured, I figured like a report would have came out that if Reddick was going to get traded and Reddick was done, I felt like Reddick would have said farewell to the team on social media, or he would have made a video and said, thank you, Philly fans, or other news outlets would have reported, you know, that Reddick is going to get traded, that this means it's going to happen. None of that happened. I mean, Reddick said nothing in the process. So this could go towards the draft that he could be, he could be, he, if he makes it through the draft, doesn't get, and that's the most dangerous part of this whole thing. He could be trade bait for the draft. That $1 million to April 1st means absolutely nothing. They just don't want to pay it to him because they want to get something done. They want to get an extension done. And guys, like I said, you're you're going to be, well, you have like $32, $33 million, which still there's some unspecified contracts that are still not on the books yet. On They're still not on the book. There's a few contracts still on the books. Okay. So the Eagles will get 11 plus million dollars with an extension. If it's up to me right now, restructure his contract, give him more money, make him happy and let him play out the year. That's, you know, but unfortunately, you know, that that cap hit's going to be a problem. So they need to restructure him or do something, give him more guaranteed money up front. He's a $21 million cap hit this year. That's the other problem that's going on. So is it Howie? Is it, you know, and business is business. I understand it. Is it Howie? Is it Reddick? Is it Reddick not getting the, the money he wants? Or is it Howie Roseman getting the compensation? I think the bigger issue right now, if a trade is going to happen, is Howie Roseman getting the compensation he wants. Okay? That's that's what I think. All right? I mean, if Legarius Sneed is going to be traded for a 25 third, because you got to trade for a guy and you got to pay him. A 25 third round pick. Brian Burns, like I said, Brian Burns, second round pick and then some at 26, 27, and doesn't even have close to the statistics as Hassan Reddick does. Okay? That's that's my whole entire issue right now. I think it's both. I think it's compensation. I'm glad Howie Roseman isn't giving Hassan Reddick to a team like a cheap bag of chips because. Reddick can go to a team, especially in an aggressive system, whether it is the Cardinals or something or the Falcons, and he will produce immediately. This is something you don't trade and just look at the if a team was willing to give a first round pick or a first round pick swap and we moved up like 10 spots, I'd probably do it because you get because possibly with another first round pick, you can get three players in this draft that are going to be superstars from this team going forward for years to come. That's a different story. But if you're just getting a second rounder and, you know, you're the the compensatory pick game is a whole different story because you need to you need to trade a pick higher. Okay. So if Reddit goes for a third round pick, you can get it. You can, you know, if Reddit goes for a second round pick, you can get a third round compensatory pick, which is great. So you'll get a pick for, for next year, which is good. You know what I mean? Um, like they did for Javon Hargrave on obviously drafting Jalen Carter. You know what I mean? So so they, they you know, Howie Roseman likes to work that compensatory game. 
but I feel like this is going to be the biggest mistake they make. Biggest mistake. If I had to, like, give up to God, to Jesus Christ, and say, okay, well, if we're not going to get a first-round pick, and you're forcing me to trade Hassan Reddick, what, what is the least I would take for Hassan Reddick as of right now? If it's not a high second-round pick, I don't want him. I mean, sorry. If it's not a second-round pick, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm keeping him on this roster. I want to keep him on this roster. I don't want to give up. He, it's not even worth to get another second-round pick. Yes, another second round pick would be great. Not a pick swap. I'm talking an extra second to get him. I don't think I don't think Reddick is even worth a pick swap. You give us your second, boom, it's done. Okay, because at the end of the day, if the Eagles end up getting three second round picks out of this, okay, if they end up getting another second round pick, three second round picks, man, the movements that Howie Roseman is going to make in this draft, where you could trade up probably twice into the first round. I'm not even kidding. Okay, is it well? I mean, you'll move up from 22, maybe. And, and then, obviously, with one of those seconds, you're going to move up. One of those seconds, you'll move back. And then whatever he wants to do with the third one, he can do whatever he wants with. Or he can package it up for maybe a player. And so we, we can't, you know, a player player a player pick trade, maybe. Uh, it could be a player for player pick. I mean, a bunch of different things can happen here, okay? Now, looking at, obviously, um, the Falcons and the Arizona Cardinals, two teams that really need edge rushers badly. So I picked up their, you know, I kind of searched up their draft picks. I kind of want to go over that really quick because I think it's really important. And yeah, so Arizona, Arizona is, you know, Jonathan Gannon had, you know, we, we he knows what Reddick is. He knows how to, you know, knows what, knows what he could do. Okay. So what's more interesting here with the Cardinals is they have pick number 35. Okay. They're literally just out of the first round that right there, a few picks after the first round, which is great. Um, and if you acquire that 35 and maybe a mid rounder for next year for 25 or something like that, I think, like I said, I don't like, I don't want to trade Reddick for anything unless it's a first, but it's not going to happen. I don't want to trade him at all. But if you had to force me, that number third, that pick number 35 round two would be fantastic. I think that's a, I mean, you're, you know, an early second, a very, very early second. A few picks within the second round is great. going to be a lot of players that drop to that spot or the Eagles can trade back up in the first, which is awesome. You know, if they feel like the first day, you know, the first day they don't feel like they don't need to trade up. There's still a lot of guys on the board. They'll wait till the second day, do their thing. Now, Atlanta Falcons, they have pick 43. Not too bad. Okay, not too bad. You know, you move up another 10, you know, what is it, like a 10 spots, something like that. So um, still not a bad pick in, in round two. So we're, I, I'm not looking at the third round picks. I don't care about the third round picks because I'm telling you right now, if the Eagles trade Reddick for a third, and you know it's not happening. You, you know that it, it is not happening because at this point, okay, <laughs> I'm just, at this point, it's never going to happen. It's just not because... It, it has gone on for this long, for this trade to even go down, if it's even happening, if a trade is even happening, okay? But I am going to be very upset at Howie, and I understand if he has no control, if Reddick is just like, yeah, I just want to go and get my money, but, you know, maybe Howie ha has past negotiations at this point and said, you know, I, I'm not getting the right compensation. Reddick should just come back for the year, restructure his deal, give him more guaranteed money this year, keep him happy, let him play it out, and let him just walk after this year. That's it. That's that should be the plan right now. Unless you want to extend them, if they extend them two years, even better. I'm not worried about the. It's not the cap space. It's not. It has nothing to do with the. It has nothing to do with the money on our side. It has to do with what he wants and what how he's getting back in return. If a trade is to facilitate, okay. Not taking a third round pick. I don't. I like I said. I don't want to take. I, I don't even. I don't even want to trade him. Period. But a second, a high second round pick is what I'm looking for. I don't know what other teams are available. I've heard, I've heard the Falcons during the combine. The Cardinals are kind of a new one that kind of popped up. I don't know what other teams. I, 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 I be, you know, before I heard Houston, but that's probably not going to happen anymore. Um, but those are like the only two teams I've actually heard so far that have interest. So because we haven't heard that Reddick was even somewhat leaving this team in general, I mean, not even one report of Reddick even leaving. This is just rumors of just they're trying to get a trade done or they're trying to resign him or how he's not getting the compensation he wants. I know I've been I know I've been kind of repeating myself, but it's really aggravating because I think this this whatever happens with this player is going to designate what we do in this draft first round. Because if they get rid of him, you can't just leave it alone. You have to trade up and go get the best edge rusher, whether it's verse, whether it's Laiatu Latu. It's got to be somebody. I mean, at this point, you might have to trade to the top fifteen, top sixteen. 
you're gonna, you might have to, and you have the compensation to do it. I mean, that's not, not going to take two second round picks and and a, a first round pick swap just to move up. You know, a, a good amount of spots. I think I think it will be affordable. I don't think it's going to cost the Eagles an arm and a leg. Um, you know, the Eagles still have three fifth round picks on top of it. You can't trade, you know what I mean? So if you remember, you can't trade comp picks. So I'm not worried about that. Those second rounders are not comp picks, which is great. Um, you know, so that's a good thing. But I'm hoping this gets done. I'm hoping the extension gets done. It sounds like a trade is facilitating, but because nothing has been reported and it's been like the same report almost every time, and it's been days and days and days. If I don't hear anything day after day after day, the more we don't hear the better it is for us because nothing is getting done. And Reddick is still on contract with the Philadelphia Eagles. So we have the leverage right now. Once Reddick says, I'm holding out this offseason, if he says he holds out during training camp, I'm going to hold out until I get a deal, then you have to trade him. Then you really have no choice. Because if he's stuck on that one number, and I don't know if it's 25 plus million because that was a few couple few weeks ago, but... If that's still the number, the Eagles are not paying that. <laughs> a lot of teams probably aren't going to pay that anyway. I don't see it happening. But trade value, he's got a lot of value. But I'm not. I'm glad Howie's not giving him up for nothing because I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. You know, Falcons give me AJ Terrell. I'm not even kidding. I'm. I'm not. I'm being a scumbag in this trade. I don't care what. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I respect Hassan Reddick and his game. I'm not going to give him up for nothing. And we're not getting anything back in return. And we're going to look like idiots trading him for a third and a fifth round pick. whoop dee whoop dee do, Not happening. So let me know what you guys think about the trade in general. What picks you think we should give up? Um, what you think we can get for Hassan Reddick? Would you trade him? Would you not trade him? Do you think he's draft trade? Do you think he's still on the roster after the draft and nothing's done yet? If this, if he's still on the roster after the draft, if he's not even traded after the draft or during the draft and even after the draft, um, he's most likely going to be in Philadelphia unless he holds out. That's a whole different story. I can't see the holdout thing happening. I just, I don't see how that him and Howie would get into like a. I just don't see it. The relationship is really good. I don't see why that would happen. It's coming down to some money, but this has been going on for a while. Two weeks in the free agency and nothing is even, nothing's even happened yet, and. The more we don't hear, the better for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's what I think, in my opinion. And, um, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see on what happens. So they trade them. It's going to be a big loss for this defense, this defensive line. And, man, you're weak on one side. I don't care if Josh Wett. Josh Wett's not on that level. And Brand Graham is surely hell not on that level either. Um, and training up for a guy is not gonna is not gonna fix anything. It's not. The, you want to win a Super Bowl? And trust me, Howie's not stupid. He knows. He knows keeping Reddick is is – they got to keep Reddick, you know, but if they have to trade him, if, if Reddick is just like balls to the wall, just not listening is like, nope, I want this. I want that. I'm not budging. I'm not budging. Maybe it's his agent telling him not to budge and, and take, you know, so I get it. I get the business side of it, but I'm being a fan at the end of the day and why he's so important here. And you sign Bryce Huff to, yeah, stack up. Other teams stack up, dude. The 49ers stacked up their defensive line like crazy. And I understand, like, you know, you know, I, I'm not saying Reddick's going to stay here for five, six years. Restructure him for one year. Extend him for two years. I don't care what it is, but this is a major loss for the Eagles if this happens. So that's all I got to say on the Hassan Reddick debacle. And the news and rumors that came out, and we'll, ev we'll obviously keep on watch with it because I had to do a rant on this because I had no choice. So that's where we're at with that. Okay. Um, now, new sign for the Philadelphia Eagles. Will Greer is coming in as the fourth QB, which he's a practice squad guy. He's a camp arm, um, the quarterback coach. And this is the Kellen Moore signing just to get him in and just give some guys some good looks. Camp arm, nothing crazy, nothing, no, you know, I think, um, you know, Tanner McKee is going to beat him. I think there's actually a big, I think there's a giant possibility that Tanner McKee could beat out, um, you know, uh, whatever his name was from Pittsburgh. I don't know. I'm having, sorry, I'm having a crazy, crazy day today. So, um, I, I, you know, so, so another quarter, you need, you need, you need at least four quarterbacks going into camp and, you know, this is just a camp arm at the end of the day. He's not making the team. He won't even, you know, he'll be, maybe he'll be practice squad. He probably won't even be practice squad. He'll probably be cut at, at you know, probably be cut, you know, so we'll, 
we'll see. So this is more of a Kellen Moore type thing. Knows the system, can give guys looks, and and that's pretty much it with him. So that's a uh, that's going to be the last quarterback move that they make. And obviously, you know, not one that they're paying five million dollars to, like Mar- Marcus Mariota last year, since we owe him money now from last year. You know, too big of a contract going forward. So. Oh, that guy is pretty much it. What would you give up for Hassan Reddick? Would you trade him, not trade him? Big mistake for the Eagles? Yes, I think so. I think so, Howie. I'm not I'm not giving up on this. I'm telling you, like, if he gets traded, all hell's going to break loose with me. I'm not going to punch any walls, but I'm sure going to throw some bad words around here and there. Um, but I really hope not. In all seriousness, I'm not joking, I, I really hope he doesn't because uh, that's... that's it, you, if you are if you can't even make it work and can't meet him in the middle, then I don't know. I'm not going to say, oh, it's just all Howie's fault because it could be Reddick's fault, too. Like, Reddick has a lot to say in this, too. It's not just Howie, it's Reddick and what he wants, you know? So it goes both ways. Guys, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you uh, like the video. It helps out the channel a lot. And make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Eagles news every single day. Keep you guys updated. We do streams every day as well. And keep you guys updated on everything. We hang out. We talk football. And that's pretty much about it. Guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes, what up, Falls? Peace up, guys. Peace.